Okay, I want to talk about saving changes to your GitHub repos. So let's say you've created a repo on GitHub. There might be a file or two inside there. Now you want to download it to your computer. Okay, that's a simple enough with the git clone command, and we'll do that here. But then after that, once you've made some changes to your project, you've updated files, you've added new files, you want to put those changes back up on the repo. So how do we do that? All right, let's start with cloning. I have a, a very basic repo here. I've got a git ignore file and an empty index.html file. I want to bring this down to my computer. So we'll start with our glit git clone command. And the git clone command, we can call it with just git clone and the URL with dot git put at the end. So I'll take that, paste that inside of here. And we just add dot git at the end. I can do that, or I can specify that I want to create a folder and give the name for the folder. So let's call the folder, I don't know, giddy up. There we go. So it's cloning it into that folder. There we go. It's downloaded it. I now have that. I can CD into that folder. So we change directory into giddy up. We list. There it is. There's the index.html file. Git ignore is hidden by default. So let's do ls-la. There it is. There's the git ignore file. And here's the folder, .git. This means that this folder is a git repo. Okay. We could do git status to find, find out things about it. All right, we're up to date with Origin Master. If you ever want to just download whatever's on there now, we've got this configured, we've got this set up, we have Git Remote. Let's take a look at the information. Yep, sure enough, there it is. So if you call the push or fetch, fetch commands, this is where we're going. So push is pushing up, fetch is bringing down. Uh, sometimes you'll see pull, which is fetch and merge together, but this is the URL, and this is the name right here, origin. This is what it's called. So I can, at any point, if I want to get the latest copy, we can just do git pull. That will just try to download and give us the latest version of whatever's on there, and it'll try to merge it into our code. So great, we're up to date. If we had made a change on here, and we did this, so let's come in. Let's look at the git ignore file. Let's actually uh, edit this file right here, live. So I'm going to say, well, I'm working on a Mac, so I want to make sure that DS store files are not included. All right, oh, I should leave a message here. I didn't leave a message, very, very bad form. But I've now changed this. That means that we now have an updated version of this file in this repo. Back inside of here, if I run git pull again, there we are. So we downloaded that file. All right, so that's getting us the most up-to-date version on our computer. But what if I make changes now to the project and I want to push those up? Okay, let's make a change. So I'm going to use uh, brackets. I'm going to open up my current folder. There's index.html. There's nothing inside of here, so let's just create a template. Saved. Okay. Now, if we do git status, this command, git status, tells us what's been happening. We have modified the file index.html, and it gives you hints here. It says use git add or git commit to update those changes. So we are going to do exactly that. We're going to do git add index.html. That's the file that we're going to add. We're going to be staging that. That's the first step. You take the files that have been changed. You stage them. So you're tracking those changes. Now we can put that into our repo. But this is just locally. This is on my computer. I am saying that I want to save these changes permanently. Make a record of these changes. So here we go. Git commit dash m for the message. This is what I forgot to do on GitHub. Let's say updated index.html basic. All right, we've done it. Let's do git status again. Okay, your branch is ahead of origin master by one commit. 
use git push to publish your local commits. This is what we want to do right here, git push. We want to push our changes up to that origin branch. Remember uh, when we did git remote-v to tell us where to put it? Okay, we've done a fetch. That was the pull. That was the clone and then the pull. We want to do a push. We want to take our changes and send them up to GitHub. So let's do exactly that. Git push and since we have to be logged in, we say dash u origin and we can specify the branch if we want. There we go. That did it. So we now just took our current version of this index.html file and we pushed it up to GitHub. So two minutes ago was this git ignore, two months ago was the initial commit, refresh, there we go. A minute ago was the updated index.html basic. So we have made that change. Sure enough, there it is. There's the contents updated, and that's it. That's all of the commands that we need to do this basic management. So there, there was git clone. That was to download the initial copy. We had git remote-v. That one allowed us to look and see what was the URL if we had the URL set up. If we didn't, we could say git remote uh, add origin and then whatever the URL was. So doing this git remote add origin, that's the one that's going to provide this URL to our GitHub repo. Git status. Git status is going to give us what needs to be updated, what needs to be added, what needs to be uh, committed, where we currently stand with our, our repo. Pull to download the latest versions. Push was to push it up. And that was the one we said, origin master. So git upload signed in with my user account to whatever's defined as origin, which is this URL. Master, this is the branch that I'm on right now. That's the branch that I want to push up to. Okay, and that's it. That's how you update your GitHub repo. Now, one last thing. If you were looking for a good resource, the Git website itself, and I'll put this URL down in the comments, or down in the description, rather. This URL brings you to this book, and you can download the PDF or EPUB or Mobi version of this book. So this is like the official guide to Git. Uh, it's a great book and it gives you all of this information so you can delve in and learn a lot more about the basic Git commands. All right, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.